Hi, and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Today's topic is going to be Java 19, and I know what you are thinking. I already did Java 19 video. Well, Java 19 has a lot of changes, and they are kind of uh, big ones to explain through code. So I already made a video on the parallelism features, Project Loom. But today I will be covering Project Amber and Panama related things. And I will be picking the biggest one. So I have three features to cover today. So all of these will be part of Java 21, or at least most of it. If you watch my videos right now, you will be kind of knowledgeable already next year when Java 21 is released. So uh, please invest a little bit of time. Join me for Java 19 new features. Let's go. So instead of just listing the kind of new features from here, by the way, all the links in the description section of the video. So you can dive into these and spend a little bit more time if you want more detail. But I try to give you a good overview and explanation with code. What do these mean? Yes, I think most of people are lacking that one. I want to do a shout out because I blatantly stole some code examples from this nice, awesome website. I verified that everything works. I modified them a little bit, but the source is here. And therefore, I'm including this link also in the description in case you want to read it. Very good blog. Some of the things are in Java API documentation already, so also these links are uh, below my video in the description section. But now let's dive into code. Uh, first warning, I'm doing cutting edge stuff, so my language server and ID are not up to this yet. There will be a lot of red. But I am able to run the code and demonstrate that everything works, test that everything works, by using an early access edition of Java 19 and enabling preview and Java 19 source level and some incubator modules sometimes. Doing all that, I'm able to demonstrate that everything I show you now will work. But if we open it up in the IDE, there is a lot of red. Let's ignore that for a bit. Time will fix all of these. So, but over time, um, all these flags are unnecessary and uh, IDs will handle the syntax, but not today. So, have to be careful. I just want to know that the syntax works. That's why I'm going through all these and running these, actually. So, feature number one pattern matching for Java. We already have pattern matching from Java 17. And uh, case for pattern matching is that when you have some kind of variable, it's possible to do quite nice kind of general libraries or utilities in cases when the type of the thing can vary. So we already have something like this in play. Um, I have an object and if it's a string, let's do this one. If it's an integer, let's do this one. And otherwise this is generic handling for anything. Um, we already have guarded pattern syntax from Java 17. So this is already in play. The guarded pattern uh, is saying that if it's a string and it, if it's a long string, let's do this one. Otherwise, let's do this one or anything else. Okay. So the guarded pattern is using this AND syntax in Java. And only change in Java 19 is that perhaps it should be when. So perhaps it should be a new keyword. And this is a proposed change. In a preview, preview level stuff is probably not going to change much it's almost finalized. And I know what you are saying. You are saying that, oh no, I've been using when keyword all over my code because I'm a crypto bro. So uh, what if you already did stuff like this? Well, good news, it's not going to break because <laughs> this is contextual keyword. So it only has meaning used with case. So if you do it as a variable, it's not going to break. <laughs> and that's a good thing. So it is a new keyword, but it's a contextual keyword. So let's put things together. I have an object. In case it's a string and when the string length is bigger than five, then let's run this code. A kind of tiny change, but uh, I think this guarded pattern is pretty awesome for utilities and libraries. You might never need it, but it's nice syntax when you do need it. So I've used it uh, rarely, but I enjoy it when I use it. And this is something you can expect to have in Java 19 and then in Java 21. So tiny little thing, syntactic help for things. And it's in preview, so soon to be released for real. Related to that one, we have record patterns, and that's pretty cool. I love records. If you have been watching my channel, you know that I love records. 
pretty good stuff. So for the records, let's say that we have an object and uh, it, type, uh, it happens to be a record. So we can do the pattern matching already. This has been available for quite a long time, object instance of YouTube video. We can, we can already point like a variable for that one. So if it's a YouTube video, let's point my variable to it. So I don't actually need to do any typecasts because we hate typecasts. Bugs uh, live in the typecasts. So if it's a YouTube video, then let's point to it and use it. So this is old stuff. I unleashed it from the comments so you can see that it already works. Nothing new there. Same thing with switch case. I can do switch object. And if it's a YouTube video, let's point to it. We don't need to do the typecast anymore. So that's good stuff, but this is old stuff. So what, what's coming up in Java 19? Well, I've seen this in Kotlin and Scala, and this is called a deconstruction pattern. So if the object is YouTube video, then let's deconstruct it. So instead of saying that, like my grandfather did with old versions of Java, I would have checked that, okay, it's, it's a YouTube video type. Then let's cast it. So it's an object. So, so first cast is to YouTube video, and then I would be grabbing something from within. But in this case, I directly go to the variable, making the code just a little bit cleaner, nicer, more readable. Little things do add up. That's something I have learned from all the Java, Java changes. So I love this change. It's quite intuitive and making my code to be less lines. So it's going to be beautiful. And therefore, it's also something that's in preview. So probably something you will expect to be uh, released in Java 21. And you can also do nested record patterns, but then things get a little bit more complicated. So I'm not doing that example here. But if you like, check the links in my video and you can see some examples. But we could have something, uh, we, get, we could have record within my YouTube video and I could uh, drill in deeper and get what's nested within all of these and point to that one directly. So to summarize, nice syntactic sugar that applies if you do utilities or libraries, you will probably encounter these and then you will be very happy that you can express yourself with a few few less lines of code. They will be more intuitive and more safe. So all that's very, very good. Okay, I hope I managed to explain these ones. Let's go to my last point and that's Jay and I. I have to rant a little bit because I'm an old fogey. I started Java when it was uh, in 1995 and it was quite different to today's Java. And I unfortunately have had to dip my toes into Jay and I. JNI is Java native interface, and back then that was very dangerous area, but we still had to do it for two reasons. One was performance, so, so some things used to be more performant when you do that outside Java. So you would dip outside Java and run some native code in, in C, C++ code, uh, machine level code, and then you would get the results back to Java. There's less and less use cases that we need to do that because since then Java has become a lot more performant, but still it might be the case. More probable case, however, is to link to outside Java to reach something where there is not yet any Java APIs. So let's say that there's native driver that you need to access and there is no Java API for that one. So how do you do it? Well, you used to do it with J and I. And that was horrible because you had to go outside Java memory boundaries and use some specific tools and compile extra headers. So uh, not, not a nice world. Uh, you would survive if you are perfect on both Java and the native side. But if your skill levels or quality control lacks even a tiny bit, you create horrible bugs and memory leaks all over your code. So if you have had Java code crash a lot, and a leak memory, it's probably using JNI, I would say. Okay. So we have something a little bit more beautiful growing. This is uh, now uh, just out of incubator, a, uh, a preview level, so almost done. Again, very beautiful thing. It's called uh, foreign function and memory API, and it's combining two earlier incubations that used to be separate. Now we are getting nice API. And the be beautiful thing for me here is that instead of using extra tools and dipping your toes outside Java, 
everything is now inside the API. So we have these APIs coming up where you can uh, get a lookup object uh, that you can use to look up uh, things outside Java. In this case, we are linking the standard library called string length. And then you have API to allocate that memory outside Java heap. So we have off heap memory. I'm grabbing a string that's outside Java memory. But I'm doing all that within my code and API. Then I'm using combining these two. So I'm accessing an external function and passing it um, string outside Java heap combining all these and it's a bit un anticlimactic but let's run it anyway the run with java 19 let's pass my example here just to show you that it works and we get answer is 13 this time so that was the string length so i could obviously do this with less code in java but imagine whatever native libraries you would want to access with this one in my case let's say i want to access my mind reading device that i have uh, not kidding, by the way, see my earlier videos. But I have my brainwave reading device and there is no native API for that one, but now I could create it quite easily. Wrap it as a nice Java library and probably a bit less bugs and dragons relying here because this is new. It's taking care of a lot of things I needed to remember before. So I think pretty interesting stuff. But... All of this that I have explained is something that's quite special purpose. So it's, it's a little bit hit and miss. So if you use these things, um, then these are very convenient. But it might be that you have coded Java for 20 years and never needed any of this. In that case, nothing new for you. So I want to do these update videos uh, to prepare you for Java 21, because now I'm happy that Java 17 is already quite common and people are happily using everything that's in there. So I'm preparing my mind and your mind for Java 21. That's the next big, big Java coming up next year, 2023. Hopefully that's going to be awesome here for the coders. <laughs> World is in turmoil, but Java is getting better all the time. And that's keeping me with Java because there's pretty cool other languages already coming up. Java needs to kind of um, update itself all the time to keep up and uh, I'm quite happy good things coming up watch my videos I will do more videos on Java 20 intermediate level and then when Java 21 is getting to be ready uh, trust me to do a lot of stuff combining all these together and uh, explaining how you jump from Java 17 to 21 but best way right now is to keep up and uh, do these smaller updates and stay up to date so you will be as well ready i know i will be and if you like my channel if you like the videos let the love show and if there is anything you would like to see me explain uh, also leave some feedback on that one if i made any blunders explain something wrongly by the way correct me that hasn't happened yet but i am making these videos also in the hopes that my own skills will evolve and that will happen if you give me feedback so do that please it will uh, make my day every time somebody drops feedback. Thanks for watching my video. See you in the next one. Bye bye.